You can now create entire AI-generated worlds for your short films using this free workflow. This tool changes your video's background based on a prompt or reference image, and the best part is that it keeps your original camera movement perfectly intact, giving you precise control over every shot. You get animated environments that can interact with your footage, generating fitting shadows or even something like splashing water. To show you exactly how this works and how you can set it up on your own computer, we filmed an entire short film around this technique that we'll show at the end of this video. So make sure to subscribe and watch to the end. This is actually the same tool that we used in our last video about creating consistent and controllable characters. It's called Vase, works with the open source video model WARN 2.1 and it's been one of my favorite AI models for a while now. For this shot in our last short film, we tested whether it could replace the background and it looked really promising. So we planned a whole short film around this concept to really push it to its limits. We filmed it like a traditional movie complete with proper lighting setups, but we had to imagine everything that would surround me in the final shot. It was a bit like acting in front of a green screen, but without the hassle of setting that up and looking at green all day long. We could just walk outside and start shooting. Besides that, to understand what makes this workflow so special, let me show you this shot here, where the tiny version of me is supposed to be sitting on a couch. In the original footage, you can actually hear my arm hitting the wooden table. But now, in the final shot, we have this soft couch that actually responds to my movement and we also get some really nice shadows. For one ways to understand what we want to generate, we need to prepare a few things. We need a shot with our subject on a gray background, a black and white mask where our subject is white, and if we want to keep the original camera movement, we need to track our shot and create a pass with key features marked as squares on black. And for this, we created this free workflow for ComfyUI, which is an open source AI interface. To help you install ComfyUI, we prepared a free guide on our website. Once you have ComfyUI installed, you can just drag and drop our workflow file in and you might need to install some custom nodes. So do that by going to the manager Install missing custom nodes, select all of them, click install and once they are installed you need to restart ComfyUI and then you'll be able to use the workflow. This one is pretty simple, all you need to do is go to the left here and upload a video. Below you can give this shot a name or a number and at the bottom here this model you can download it from the link here and put it in the ComfyUI models by RefNet folder. You might need to create this one manually. Make sure to double check if it's selected in the node. Now all you need to do is click run. After a few seconds or minutes depending on the length of your video and your computer you should get these three passes here. First you get the subject isolated in front of a grey background. You will get the black and white mask and you will get the original footage scaled down to this resolution that you set, set here in the beginning. All of these videos will have this resolution and I recommend just leaving that at this one right here. If you want, you can also come down here and extract the first frame if you need that. But more importantly, you can also use this workflow to track your footage. For this, we come here and enable a camera track. And now here in the switch node, you have two options. First, you can set this to 1 and this will use ComfyUI to track the camera. Or you can use 2 and you can import your own coordinates and it will actually use the, them to generate this video here of the squares moving along the black background. We explained extensively how to do this in our last video. But for now, I will set this to 1. This one uses the code tracker model for tracking features in videos. And this one basically will create a grid of points on the first frame of your image and then track these points over the duration of your shot. You can set the grid size, so how far these points should be spread out, and you can change the number of points. And I would keep this pretty low, actually. I want to use maybe like 18. We don't want to give it too much because we still want to give it freedom to generate new stuff in, in the video that doesn't follow these points. So what I will just do now is click run and after a few seconds we have this shot right here. This tracker can be a bit hit or miss and especially for longer shots where the camera is moving around a lot it might not work so well. But you can also use any other standard compositing tool or 3D software to generate these passes. For example in After Effects you could use the Rotobrush tool to isolate your character and put them on top of a 50% grey layer.
You can generate the black and white mask the same way, just hide that background and turn the rotoscope of yourself white. The edges also don't have to be perfect because one vase just generates new ones. For tracking you can just use the automatic 3D tracker, create some null objects and a camera and then create red rectangles and place them where they are visible over the duration of your shot. Hide the video so you have a black background, export and you have a perfect tracking pass. Just make sure to keep those red triangles pretty thin, otherwise they might show up in your video like here. And this is a good example that instead of just tracking the shots and recreating the camera movement, you can actually use these squares to generate new camera movement. Here we just scaled them down to create this effect that I'm growing in size. Oh, and also you need a pretty detailed prompt for your shots, something like this one. And this is optional, but you can use a reference image. We mostly generated ours using Seed Dance 3, but it really doesn't matter. Use your favorite model. Now that we have all our passes, we can import our simple version of the workflow. Now this looks pretty large because it supports two different kinds of one video models that you can use with it. You install this workflow the same way as the previous one. First install the missing custom nodes using the manager and then download the required models. To make things easier, we've prepared free guides on our website and a step-by-step -step installation video to walk you through the whole setup. For this demonstration, I want to use the GGUF version of the models and I recommend you start out with them too. Basically, you can ignore all these models up here and come down to the GGUF models down here. You can click on this link and here you can find all the one 2.1 vase GGUF versions. Now you want to select the largest version that fits on your GPU VRAM. So for example, if you have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, I would recommend the Q6 version right here. If you have only 12 gigabytes of VRAM, try using the Q4. I have 24 gigabytes of VRAM, so I would probably use this one, but let's tr actually try the Q5 instead. Next you need to download the clip model, you can get that right here. And we are also using this LoRa here that will allow you to generate video at a smaller step count. So this will drastically cut down your generation times. Once you have all your GGUF models loaded, you can configure your workflow right here. Let's start on the top here and here you can select the resolution. Let's try 720p, so I select one. Down here you can select how many frames should be loaded. The maximum for this simple workflow is 81. You can select if you want to skip some of the first frames of the video. This node right here allows you to activate interpolation. So then you will only generate every second frame and interpolate the missing frames, allowing you to generate 162 frames. And next we need to load in the video passes that we created. Up here we want the actor on gray, this one. Below that you want to upload the alpha mask, this one right here. And down here you can select your camera track. So I go to my ComfyUI output folder, mask output and select this camera track right here. In this next group here we can load in a reference image for the style and composition. So I generated a few low angle shots of dogs. Let's take this one right here, drag it, drop it in. Set this to one so it's enabled. You can disable that if you don't want to use a reference frame. In this next group here you can select if you not just want to use a reference image for the general style but you want to use it as a start frame. And you can select one and this will automatically composite your actor on top of this image. You can use the reference image as background image only or you can use no start frame. In this shot I want to give one vase a bit more freedom so I will not use a start frame. This next group here is really important if you want to create that matching camera movement. You have four options here. You can select one and this will just use the track that we just imported. You can select two and this will create the open pose movement of your character and combine that with your track which is the option that I mostly use. You can automatically generate canny outlines of your shot and use the pose. I never use that actually. Or you can set this to four and this will then load the video that you put in here if you have another external tracking shot for example. So let's try two. Let's deactivate these following nodes right here. We'll take a look at this in a second and let's quickly run the workflow. It loaded our reference image here. Instead of using this one as the first frame it created a 50% gray image. 
so it will not use any image at all. And then here it combined our tracking that we just created with our pose estimation. Next, we have two groups here, and these are the different setups for generating the video. If you want to use the full model, you need to come up here and activate this first group here, but we are using the GGF version, so we need to activate this one right here. And now we can come down here and create a detailed prompt for our shot. Pro tip, use ChatGPT or another LLM to help you create this detailed prompt. A good prompt will drain drastically improve your quality. So I created this detailed prompt right here. Now the only thing left to do is click run. This actually came out looking really, really great, especially for the GGF version. Here is a comparison uh, how that would look with the full, with, with the FB8 version. Let's quickly try going back here to the beginning and, and let's actually disable the reference image. And now let's ask ChatGPT, let's actually try something like this. I go down here and put it in and click run again. <laughs> Interesting. I would not have expected something like this, but still pretty cool. And you can see the camera movement and everything still matches perfectly. And it even tried to like around the edges here, it tried to generate new light uh, on my body here. So it actually tries to integrate the video as well as the background with each other. So that's pretty cool. But for our short film, we still have a problem because this workflow can only generate 81 frames or like around 160 with interpolation. But we had many shots that were much longer than this. So for this, we created the advanced version of this workflow, which looks like this. And actually this one works the exact same way, but it breaks down the input video into smaller batches. So if you come here to the left, you can set the maximum number of frames loaded here. And here you can set the batch size. And if you set that to 81, for example, it will break down your videos into multiple 81 batches and generate them one after another. And then it will automatically stitch them together and color correct them so that they match. If you want to support the channel and get access to the advanced versions, exclusive example files and our amazing Discord community, consider joining. Just remember that this is an advanced workflow, so make sure to get comfortable with the free workflow first. For this short frame, we kept compositing pretty minimal. But we did add the original 4K footage back on top of the generated video for some better quality. We also used the AI model Depth Crafter to estimate the depth information in our videos. It creates these black and white depth maps where white pixels are close to the camera and black pixels are further away. And we can then use this depth map in After Effects to change the focus point, highlighting the extremely small size of my character and imitating that typical macro photography look. Now in traditional VFX you would need to build 3D sets or shoot plates that perfectly match the exact camera position of your green screen footage but with this workflow this is not necessary. But the cool thing is that you can still do it if you want. For this shot I wanted to put myself in this giant bus with like people nearly stepping on me. And the first tests were really promising but I wanted precise control where the people would be in space and when they would step on me. So I exported the 3D track to Blender, created a 3D layout of the bus, added people and gave them some rough animation. I then exported this sequence as a depth sequence because one vase can also understand like depth information to generate new video. Now this looks still a bit cursed, but I think that's because one vase was really struggling with that low angle perspective. Finally, we edited the short film in DaVinci Resolve and after some minor color correction and some more elaborate sound design, the movie was done. So here it is. Enjoy Unique Perspective. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Thompson, <clears throat> tell me why you're qualified for this position. Well, uh, I love data. I love, um, at my previous position, I was responsible for the, what I call the three Ds of digital engagement. Uh, data, demographics, and, um, uh, sorry, um, um, uh, d d delivery, uh, delivery. I have a, a six years uh, experience um, in, in the field. I would say I'm a very seasoned worker. I, I have a lot of uh, experience, and I also love analysis. Um, uh, analysis is one of my uh, favorite things uh, that I like. <clears throat> um, well, we'll be in touch. Thank you.
talked to my associate and we loved your unique perspective. You're hired. Hello? Are you still there? Mr. Thompson? Actually, I think I'm ready for a bigger position. Thanks for watching and thanks to our lovely Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. If you create something with these workflows, feel free to tag me in your work or post it on our Discord. I always love to see what you come up with. See you next time.